All right, guys, let's just get to it. So with this motherboard that's installed into this system, it's having two error codes. And at this point, because I think one, one two is just too many. Um, so I'm just going to pull out that, rhythm, that motherboard and go with the, the next version up. And that next version up, I'll be going with Rogue Strix X570E Gaming Wi-Fi 2. It's basically passive cooling. I will do a side-by-side -side comparison of the two motherboards so you can see the physical differences. Now, this is an old motherboard, guys. I'm not jumping on to new, um, the new platform as of yet. Um, I, as of right now, I don't need to do that, especially for this PC build for my nephew. You know what? Before I continue, let me, let me just let me just tell you guys what I got going on first before I crack this open. Hold on. So we got the motherboard. Okay, we established that. Now what's going to happen next is the hard drive. So 870 Q QVO, two terabyte, and an 870 QVO four terabyte as well as a eight terabyte hard drive of Western Digital that's going to be put into his system. Up storage for whatever it is he needs to get done. GPU. This GPU is well capable of supporting any games today, um, especially with the updates coming coming along. Um, down the pipeline, the 4070 will be do, will do just fine, the 12 gigs, okay? So I feel very comfortable with this GPU, the 4070, and this will do whatever he needs to get done in terms of gaming or any productivity. Uh, now with the GPU, I was also worried about the connector. So what I did pick up because of the current PSU inside the system, which is the Corsair RM850X. I did pick up the adapter from Corsair to wire from the PSU to the GPU. All right, that being said, let's get back to the motherboard. This is the motherboard. I don't know if you guys want to see what's inside the box, but I'll just show you guys just in case. A little card. You got the wires, you got a little strap here. This is pretty cool, little keychain right here. I didn't expect this. <laughs> I did not expect that. That's pretty cool. Um, SATA cables, zip ties. What is this? Oh, for you, single side M.2s. Stick this pad onto existing M.2 pads. Two screws and so forth. And this look like, oh, wow. They even give you a, uh, it look like an M.2 lock. This should be the antenna for the motherboard, I'm sure. Let me see how I get this thing open. Yeah, so this is the antenna. Big box for antenna. And I will just do like a, uh, a speed ramp of me removing the motherboard and installing it onto, onto the case. All right, this is how it looks. The only difference I've seen so far is the obviously the passive cooling, um, some uh, different RGB um, logos on the motherboard from this point here, as well as wording here. Um, other than that, the, the board is basically identical. Let's get everything disconnected. Let me just take out the pump. I, I wasn't aware that the 570S series actually had a second version of the Strix. I did not know that. Okay. Unscrew, unhook it. It should just. Let me see what else is holding. 
Nothing should be, oh, there it is. Nothing should be holding it in there in place. There we go. Um, is something wrong here? Why am I? Oh, there it is. Wow. Oh, I didn't that it just came out with the, sometime in this hobby, you gotta be very, Okay, uh, what do I, oh, okay, hold on. Let me get into my toolbox real quick. There we go. Make sure there's no bet pens. Let me put this to the side for now. The paste is really thick. I think, what did I use? I used the, I used the MX4. Mm. MX4 means business. All right, got some alcohol. Help clean off that residue. All right, I don't want to leave too much mess on the motherboard. So hopefully this will be just great. All right, so that's out, out the way. Move it out a little bit. There we go. Okay, so I could just easily put that right here. That's to the side. Disconnect the EPS cables. All right, let's get this motherboard out. Now, let me, at the same time, what I'm doing, let me just stop and <laughs> clean off this processor. All right. All right, so let's try to get that thing, this thing all clear, cleaned up. I got some thermal paste on the pens, so I could try and uh, clean it up later, delicately. Sorry if you guys can't see it. I, I, I gotta make sure I can get this thing as close to my eyes so I can see what it is I am doing so I won't mess up these pins. So I gotta see what I could use to clean. It's not too bad, but I know it could interfere with communication with the motherboard. So I gotta make sure I get those pins all cleaned up. It doesn't have to be perfect because thermal paste is going back on it later on. <laughs> so let me just put this to the side for now. So here we are. This is the old motherboard, new motherboard. Um, as you, I, hopefully you guys can pick up on the differences. As you can see, this one has the Strix logo. This one has like S114. You kind of see the difference already between the two in terms of the logo placement. Coming it right here, this one looks more digi digitalized, right? And on, on this motherboard has like a little, has like a vent for the fan. So they're no longer doing the fan on the two version. So it's more, so it's basically passive cooling. This is something, this is, this is new wording. It's not on this one over here. Do now is transfer over to M.2 to so this motherboard right here. took out I like this this is this is actually my first time seeing a motherboard with the easy latch for the uh, m.2s
This motherboard doesn't cover the, the one screw hole. It's right there, it's visible. These are RAMs by uh, Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro. Would you look at this? Look at this, a bent pen. This happened from popping out the CPU out the socket. Okay, so I was able to bend back the pens. Um, it looked like one of the pens was bent at the very last corner of the processor. Um, so I used this to bend it back, as well as a uh, thin card. Um, so it should be able to just slide into the socket right now. So let's get that in there. There it is. So we in there, no worries, no problems. If I was nervous, hell yeah. Took my time. It, I, I mean, I've seen it happen where um, um, the pump is uninstalled from the CPU and it just yanks it out. So going forward, um, I just have to be aware. It's, it's actually my first time experiencing that. So now that I've experienced it now, if I have any resistance of pulling out, I just have to take one of these tools and take my time and go around it. Because the wire placements is on the same locations as the other motherboard. Nice and cleaned up. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you know, I just wanted to look, I don't know, decent. <laughs> Stupid. So let's get back into the case and get this thing installed. Okay, let's reconnect these right here. Early the next morning. Uh, last night was very beat, um, plus the camera was overheating. So I had to just stop recording for a little bit, get some rest, pick the wife up from work, and here I am right now. Uh, while the camera was overheating, I, just, I took some time to rewire back the motherboard with the uh, corresponding wires in the bottom. Uh, the HD audio, USB onlys, um, fans, and RGB and power. Uh, with one new addition that will be the temperature probe, which I will be mounting somewhere in the case. I have a splitter right here that is that is communicating with the mother through the motherboard to the rear exhaust fan. Connecting back the 24 pin, but um, yeah, guys, I was. That beat. I had to get some rest. Actually, I'm actually still tired, but I'm just trying to get this get this recording out to anyone who will be interested in getting a case for themselves or for anyone. But let me just connect back this the pump. All right. So let me go for my um, thermal paste. Thermal paste I will be using is the MX4. I have actually ordered the MX6, I believe, the new one. Uh, should be coming in the mail shortly. Um, but I'll be using this for this for this build right now. Um, just put like a tiny amount on. I, you know, I just can't believe that this the CPU came along, came out with the pump. I can't believe. It. I mean, I don't know. I mean, with the heat and the type of pace, it I'm surprised that actually happened. Uh, that should be good. So my hand may get in the way, but it's, the, it's just the way the pump has to be hooked onto the motherboard. So let me just try and get this thing hooked in first. But guys, next time, now I know what to look out for in terms of taking out the pump. Again, this is the first thing that ever happened to me. 
I didn't expect that to happen. Now I know if there's any type of resistance. If anyone is experiencing any kind of resistance taking out your pump, stop right there and try to get something long, pointy and sharp to pry between the pump, the surface of the pump and the CPU. You may end up scratching it, but I, I would prefer I would prefer scratching a bent pin. Like I was saying, I didn't, I didn't expect that. <laughs> that surprised a lot of me. So this is a public announcement. The slightest resistance, pull out. <laughs> that kind of that sounds kind of funny, but it, the slightest resistance you feel just taking off your pump head from your CPU, just stop right there. Don't go ahead and um, force it. Just clean off some fingerprints. <laughs> Don't mind me. <laughs> okay. Again, this is an old pump. This is an old AIO, but it's a good one. Um, I didn't want to go out and buy another pump uh, AIO. Obviously, for obvious reason, it is black. But I didn't want to go out and buy a white one. I mean, white and black is fine. I don't see no problem with it. As long as the theme, there, there's such thing as black and white theme, so this works out. Um, so this, so this I'll leave last. On my daughter's PC, I had it mounted, uh, I think zip tied, just behind this plate here and all the way up to the very top. So that gives me the overall temperature of the case, but up high since heat does rises, obviously. So I just keep it in the highest point of the case. Next, I'm gonna want start wiring for the SSDs. So let's get started doing, um, doing that. Now, in case anyone's wondering, I did purchase a, uh, how you call it, a Lazy Susan. So it'll be easy for me to do what I, so just to do this, <laughs> as you can see. So if you got anyone that's interested on a Lazy Susan, I'll leave it down below. Okay. Like I said, I got two uh, SSDs by Q, Q, <laughs> QVO. <laughs> that's how my son's calling me right back. I'm gonna put them here. At first, I thought about putting them here, but I said, let me just take advantage of the see-through glass to have them sit right here. So I already have some established, uh, let's see what I could push here. I already have established um, wires here. So I have one here, so this I could use. Uh, I may have one over here too as well, let me see. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, I'm 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 good. You know what? Let me get them connected first, cause that way I have an idea on how to wire it. So with these particular trays, it's a automatic latch. Anyone who doesn't know, it's a little stiff, but it gets the job done. So for example, what I'll do is just open this up. There's like little holes on the side where you're able to slide in the, the little pins here. Just do it snugged in real tight. There, there, there's even a extra thumb screw you could slide into it, which I would be doing. Thumb screws are good to, thumb screw is good for like, if you're shipping it out someplace. So what I would do, I'm put, thumb screws there just to make, just to reinforce it. This is not going nowhere. And plus it's so, it got a nice silver look color to it. So you know, it's definitely gonna look nice. All right, so I'm gonna squeeze the other side in. There we go. If you look back in the uh, prior videos, you see how I tucked it away for a special time like this. I, I don't think I want to share because I'm putting a hard drive in. So I'm trying to see what's a good position to put the hard drive, which bay to put the hard drive. If I should share power load with this and the, uh, so let's see what happens. So this end will be going here definitely. Here we go. I'll do straight to straight. These two right here, if you guys can see it. Okay. You want to make sure that they end properly. You'll hear a click. Let's do this first one right here first. 
Okay. 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 That's in. That's pretty fair, right? I could work with that. It can still close. Up the zip tie right here. I mean the Velcro right here, and then out. I didn't have it, obviously I didn't have it come through the grommet. I have it come behind the plate right here. I don't have to make any type of adjustments. I'm happy the way it is right now. And when it comes to any kind of adjustments, it's just moving some wires out of the way. So I'll be able to put a, a hard drive right here. Install it this way. Yeah. So here it is. All right, these are really in. All right, so the hard drive is in, guys. Uh, let's get this thing inserted. There you have it. Let's get this thing screwed in. I may want to give this its own power supply, so I'm going to connect it separately. SATA cable, because this is already sharing to the front. This is, is also sharing to the front, SD, um, the uh, SSD, as well as the one in the rear is sharing I think this is sharing through the pump and now it's sharing to this. So I'm gonna use this as its own um, power supply. Uh, what I did off camera, I loosened out the PSU in order to add another SATA cable. I disconnected the fans as well as loosen up the tray so I get my hands in there. There it is. Okay, that's in. Wait, is it in? It's in. Just uh, screw this in partially, so I just have a snug fit. So when I catch the wire on the other side, this one have this one have to fall out. And here it is. All right, there you go. It's so just get it nice and loose. There it is. Make sure it's in there. It's in there. There's that probe. Going through the back, through the back, all the way, this is it right here, and then back into the case. We gotta jump in here real quick, uh, just to go over what I've done so far in terms of changing out the motherboard. There was two error codes I was receiving, I believe AD, and I can't remember the last one. When I remember it, or when I find out, I will put it in the Two error codes was more than enough for me to say, you know what, I don't feel comfortable with the motherboard, let me just change it out. Part we're all good. You got, you got, you got a card, you got band? Yeah. I get ready. I am ready. Oh, you're late? No. It's 12.30. Uh, sorry, I had, to, I had to drop myself to band practice. Uh, the last thing I have to get done on the PC is the GPU and wiring. Let's get that thing unboxed and get it inside this uh, case. All right, here we are, the 40, 4070 series. Um, by Gigabyte ROG, overclocked 12 gigs. For his age, this will be more than, well, this will be more than enough for him. Gigabyte on the front, um, yes. Um, this to the side. So this is the cable that I made. I had a little bit of concern about, but I believe what I have in on deck should be able to um, help with the connections. Wow, this is, <laughs> this is pretty pretty big. Um, it's funny because when you see it online, it don't look as big as when you see it in person. Um, the Intel GPU, see the comparing size. First one, um, I will be working towards the 4090 for my new build. This is the Intel Sparkle. It's not too far off. It's almost basically the same length. Uh, so yeah, this was the, his original, um, but it was just a placeholder. So this was the placeholder. Here's what we was trying to uh, go after. Okay, so I have the adapter here from Corsair, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna use it directly to the PSU and to the GPU. Okay, those two are in. Get my wire flex in the bottom. Now, for now, I'm half going, I'm gonna use this, do this method for now. Um, 
what could happen we could get strimmers instead but for right now i'm going to just install just to see if i could get this thing powered on i give it a little bit of slack so i know what i'm working with um, nothing's being too over tightened or over bent i should say almost forgot take this out along with these uh cup now Let's see how it looks. So yeah, so this is perfect. So if I was to let me get it more, I want it where it gives a nice S. Let me give it a nice bend. I don't hurt me personally. I don't mind it in the middle. I'm I find it okay to be in the middle. Okay, perfect. I want that. I want that S. <laughs> so let me get that S real quick, and I think I was able to pull it off. Make sure not up too much. Got it connected. Got my S. I would prefer the S turn down to the bottom of the of the case. This is not going anywhere. This is the reason why I kept this on here in case any wires decide to just slowly lift up. It will just hit the metal piece right here. Put it back inside. It gives me an idea how it would look. Is it in? Yeah, it looks like it is in. It's going down to this, it's going down the back the way I want it. I feel confident CPU is back in there. The only hiccup I had was that CPU. I can't, uh, that was nerve wracking. I haven't noticed no sag. It's not rolling towards me, so it's doing pretty good. Get the frame installed. All right. Yeah, it looks good. I, I, it looks good for what it is right now. <laughs> it's around. guys think down below I I'm liking the way it's coming out everything is snugged there you have it. again the peels are staying on just let my nephew enjoy it himself there we go so I could open up the case close the case open the panels everything's on point All right, guys, so I'm actually happy the way it turned out. Um, the reconnection was very simple. Again, same motherboard, same chipset, but the way it's cooled is different. Now it's passive. So let's get this thing um, plugged in, power up. Okay, let's flip the switch. Yeah, nothing. So let's see if I get it turned on. Let me dim down the light a little bit. Wait, nothing happened. Why nothing happened? Hold on, be right with you guys. I don't wanna waste too much footage. All right, guys, so I don't know what's going on, but I'm not getting no power to the motherboard. I've looked at everything that is connected. Flip the switch. Nothing's coming on, so I have to, I'm going to look at the PSU just to be sure everything's connected properly and see if I can figure this out. Motherboard is not getting no power at all. Um, oh, Jesus. So what may, what I may have to do is disconnect everything try a different power supply um the only one i have in-house is the dark hero pro 12 so that one i may have to uh run to see if there's any issues now if it 
turns out to be the motherboard. I don't want another replacement. It has to be a brand new motherboard. I, I double check, triple check. Um, normally when you flip the switch, the LED lights come on, but nothing is coming on. If it's not one thing, it's the next. Again, I have bent pens. I already fixed that. That's inside the motherboard. That may not, that should not be the issue. Um, because if you flip the, the, the switch, the LED should come on, but there's nothing coming on. I'm trying a different uh, power supply. Uh, at this very moment, I have no power to the part of, uh, I have no power going to the motherboard or anything at all. So my next step will be changing the, the power supply with my Dark Hero to see if it works. Uh, I haven't played this in a long time. Okay. I'm not getting a thing. I'm not getting anything, guys. All right, guys, so I tried. Um, this is very upsetting, depressing. So I'm just going to uh, leave it right here for now and. <sighs> much, much, much later. Okay, okay. Now I did have a little meltdown earlier, okay? That was my bad. I never experienced a CPU popping out just like the way it did earlier. Um, I powered it on, there was no lights in the motherboard. I panic. Can you blame me? This is my first time going through something like this. And when I saw that, I connected the P PSU to the motherboard, flipped the switch and no lights. I don't know what to think. I'm checking all the wires, I'm checking everything and still nothing. Flipping the switch, I hit the power button on the, on, on the, on the case, no power. So it, I just assume that the, the motherboard is dead. I went as far as reaching out to the seller and emailing him, I said I want my money back. So, so I said okay, let me dial it down a little bit. Put my emotions to the side and see what I can do. So I said, step one, let's get another PSU that I have on hand and see if it takes with the motherboard, if this could power the motherboard. Same issue, no power. I said, okay, calm down. You got this, this is nothing. So I said, okay, let me see if I could get the MSI, the MSI motherboard I have on hand and plug that into the uh, Be Quiet and see if this gives me power. I plugged it in. At first there was no light. I said, okay, let me push the flash button. And a little light came on. I said, okay, we're cooking with something here. Okay, we're cooking. All right. Now I said, okay, let me, so now I ran, so I said, okay. All right, okay. Let me see if I could go on the internet and see if there's any symptoms I could find out in terms of DOA motherboards. And I run into one guy, I'ma leave his, I'm gonna leave his video down below. And he, he got the nerve to say, motherboards that basically don't turn on right away or there's any, uh, any DOAs or anything of that nature is the user's fault. I said, this guy got some nerve. So then it got me thinking, maybe it is me. So I said, okay, all right, I'm gonna take a little criticism. So I said, let me just go and run through all the wires. And I ran through all the wires and I don't see any loose wires, any disconnected wires. There was no disconnected wires at all. So I said, okay, let me just, just let me just be sure, let me just take them out, plug them back in, take them out, plug it back in, wiggle it out, wiggle it back in, all the wiggles in the game. All right, then I said to myself, how about the RAMs? Maybe I should leave in two RAM sticks in the motherboard. So I took out two, just to be sure. You may never know, so I took out two. All right, left two out. I said, okay, this this has to be it. I, I, I triple check in my mind, all the wires are connected, nothing can stop me now. 
I plug in the PSU, flip the switch, and guess what happened? Lights. I was like, yes, I got it. But is it the, the RAM sticks? I don't know. These things you just can't figure out. I said, must, maybe it's the RAM sticks. So I said, okay, all right. I'm cooking with gas here now. So now let me see if I could figure out what happened. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I don't know. So at this point, I could plug it in now, flip the switch, and the LED lights come on on the motherboard. I'm gonna leave it at there. I'm gonna leave it there. I didn't flip the switch case yet. I'm gonna leave that for you guys right now. But I'm letting you know, I'm just giving you like a little story of what happened off camera because I was surprised. All right, so that took me for a little, I kid you not, like I wasn't, I, I took the wife to work. I'm thinking on my way back, what could it be? What could it be? What could it be? And I said, okay, I'm gonna get home. I sat by the computer. I was about to watch that, that, that Ahsoka, that Ahsoka Disney Plus. I'm like, no, I, I gotta figure this out. It doesn't make sense. A, a, a deal, right? Eh? Cause he said, the, the one, the guy I watched says, major, it's, it's highly unlikely for you to receive a DOA motherboard nowadays and it got me thinking maybe he's right maybe he's on to something maybe it's user fault maybe it's my fault and I don't know so I said I had to go back to my earlier days I remember I, it might have been a dark hero where I had first booted it up but there was no display and I took a two ram sticks and I parted back on to do with display Sometimes the RAM sticks can be very finicky. That's I. That's what I've noticed so far. So, I w now this that taking up these could have been the problem, but I just find it very hard to believe. Maybe there was loose wire and I didn't see it or noticed it, but I guess I caught it just by playing around the wires. So, you know, here we are. So what we're gonna do now, guys, is plug in the PSU, flip the switch see the light the light that i was looking for all this time and get a post this is my first time having a gpu a 40,000 series in in the building first one and one more to come and that will take me some time because this thing's very expensive you know what i mean this channel is very small very small so i everything comes out of pocket so um make sure the wife didn't hear me all right so everything comes out of pocket so I got to wait and see, take my time and get my 4090 because I do have a new case building for my home theater in the basement. Hopefully I'll get to that point, but I got a new case. This PC, this PC, I want to specialize in audio because uh, 7.1 audio. I'm going to take advantage of that. So I'm going to rig this PC like a 7.1 audio as well as play games on it and so forth. A little build coming to the channel, guys. It's going to be big. All right, so enough of me yapping and chapping. Let me just get this thing started. All right, power supply, flip the switch, LED. Proof, guys, let's get this thing powered on. <gasps> Wait a minute. Oh. I'm not going to flip out. I'm not going to trip. I'm going to figure this out at this very moment. I'm going to time lapse this. And when I figure this out, I'm going to jump on a time lapse and let you guys know what happened. Backtrack all by uh, steps. Make sure everything is connected again. I looked at the powers the power connectors and it seemed like it's working properly um it's connected so i'm with the power button there we go we got it and i think i know what might have happened i had to go through the manual um so it turns out that t sensor was connected to the wrong port in the bottom what i did i, I just moved it from where i connected it and put it where it belonged, which was the T sensor. So that I figured out. Oh, let me just can we connect the HDMI port. That's my only assumption. So now I'm able to power it on. Uh, at the moment, I don't see a display. Hmm. 
Okay, so I reset the PC, still no pulse. I'm going to connect the other two RAM sticks in the uh, in the slots and see if it makes a difference. Let me just hard power it down. Okay. I gotta figure this out. All right, guys, be right with you guys. Hold tight. Oh, I did look up online about the D7. It's a whole bunch of things someone says about making sure that there's a keyboard and mouse connected. Maybe it's a graphics card. Some says clear the CMOS. I'm gonna clear the CMOS. Got a lot of troubleshoot to do, guys. So I took out the CMOS battery right here. I'm gonna let it drain for a little bit. And hopefully I can figure out what's going on. But I will get to the bottom of this. I will get to the bottom of this. Okay guys, so yes, I'm able to get post. Basically um, remove the CMOS battery, let it drain for a couple of minutes, slide it back in, and here we are. We have an official post. F1, oh, I gotta switch keyboard, hold on. We are F1. I had to switch to this keyboard real quick. Get to the CMOS. Now I'll be able to use this right now. But sometimes, I don't know why it does that. That was a roller coaster of troubleshooting, but it was actually worth it. It can be stressful to do a troubleshooting. Um, this is my first time actually troubleshooting at this, time, at this kind of um, length. But I have to say it was kind of fun doing it, but it was stressful, stressful. But let's see what much we can do right now before I go to bed. Our CPU fan is basically when you're looking for the fan that sits on your CPU and is plugged into the motherboard. We're not using that, we're using an AIO. Ignore that bad boy. So what's going to happen now once we set, it should go straight into the operating system. Uh, boots, let's verify the boot, it's ready there. I'm not going to do any tweaks until we get into the operating system. As again, I have a lot to, to clear up. Install drivers for the GPU. Remove the old drivers for the Intel. So let's just come out of here real quick. Oh, this better jump now. It should jump in the OS. It's power cycling, which is a good thing. No code error. Okay, we detect the new processor, which will change the data structure of the storage, which is fine. So let me see, press Y to, re to reset. So let's, I'll press Y. So right now it's gonna do all the rearrangements of the data and everything. Let's do its thing and then we back into the operating system. As you can see, so now I know that seeing that logo right there, I know the uh, firmware needs updating because with the new firmware, the whole logo is all red. And here we are, guys. Hopefully, you guys can see it's not fuzzy. I hope it's not fuzzy. Move the Intel drivers and then install NVIDIA drivers. I was able to remove the drivers for the Intel, but as of right now, I don't see that I'm getting any internet capabilities. I'm gonna hardwire it right now. All right, everything should be here. Drivers, utilities, everything is here. Wi-Fi drivers, everything here that this computer needs installed. Thank you for watching the video. If you lasted this long, I appreciate it. Uh, leave a like, subscribe, any comments, leave it down below, share the video, whatever you wanna do is up to you guys, but it's very free.
to subscribe to the channel help me out all right guys till next time peace